So I guess a little bit of background. I started started beekeeping in 2010 mainly for these apple trees. I got one hive from Tim after the presentation at Gardening for Everyone, um, which is going on later today. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I was like, well, I'm going to get one hive, and then they were kind of talking about how it might be better to have two hives. And so before I even got my first bees, I got another hive and ordered another package. Uh, and started that year and had pretty good success, didn't treat them at all, and then had one of them die the next year, but the other one made it. So I was kind of trying to remain treatment-free, and I, I continued with that for a little while, and I realized that the, the mites are just a far more mobile pest than I was giving them credit for. So you can't really let this colony collapse from mites and have this strong colony over here and let evolution take place like you would kind of maybe think it would because this strong hive is going to rob your weak hive and take all those mites over there. Uh, and I kind of figured this out through mite counts, which actually I should have pulled a couple of these because I, I did an oxalic acid treatment on these two hives up here yesterday and put a fresh uh, board under there with a little bit of, I rub, rub a little bit of cooking oil on there just to uh, make sure the mites really stick. Um, I've done some drone comb removal where you take the take the drone comb out and I had one I was telling Suzanne about a little while ago that I actually left it in my shop for four days I meant to leave it in the freezer <laughs> and I, I didn't put it in the freezer and I got back down after four days and I thought well this would be an interesting experiment to see if the mites are still alive in there uncapped these cells started pulling out drones and sure enough there was live mites in there not only alive but extremely healthy I took a I had this tweezers you know and, was trying to shake it off. I took a little, took a little video, but it's not posting very well. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, through counting those mites and seeing, hey, this colony over here in September had a pretty good mite load, and now this colony over here collapsed on its way into November, and the the level of mites in your healthy colony has gone up a, a level that just can't. <laughs> It can't really happen through natural reproduction, especially when the mites don't have those drone cells to mate in, because the mites are essentially mating at two to one or three to one in a drone cell, and they're mating at one to one in a worker cell. So that's part of why their uh, population can ramp up so high in the so spring. Like so like boys and not girls. <laughs> yeah. So basically now, yeah, I'm still trying to use uh, Primarily oxalic acid. I started mm -hmm. using hop guard strips uh, uh, two years ago. Well, three falls ago now. So um, I had pretty good luck with those kind of mimicking WSU's approach of putting in a few hop guard strips at the at, a, at some warm intervals right at the end of November and the end of December when you have very little cap brood in there and. The one thing I've heard about that, though, too, is that it's not a high enough temperature for the hot beta acid to be effective because all of these things have temperature ranges where they're vaporizing or active or more effective. Uh, so, but WSU seems to be having good luck with it, and that's that was one of their only treatments. They did start dribbling oxalic acid and vaporizing oxalic acid recently. Too, Rick, are you but. doing anything on moisture control? I'm going to make some boxes like you've got. Uh, last year, I, um, I had some of those top feeders, and I tried, basically since I already had those top feeders, I didn't have a box to go on there. I messed with a few different kinds of materials, putting them in there, basically taking that, I think there's a top feeder around, but uh, putting some wood chips in there, tried towels, things. It did seem to work. Okay, because it gave the moisture. Oh, here's one right over here. Um, yeah, it's right there on top of the pipe. Right there. Um, basically, kind of, I think it just kind of gave the moisture someplace to go, and then when it did condense on the top, instead of dropping back down on the inner cover, it's dropping back down into that tub. So, the one thing there, though, is it doesn't have any vent holes. Like you were mentioning, having a larger vent hole on there, this doesn't really have any vent holes. So, so. Basically, this is just a feeder tub thing. So, I 
I also start, um, because it's got a little more space, I could put I could put a candy board. sugar candy on top of the inner cover in there. Sometimes I put it underneath the inner cover too. I kind of like leaving it on the top just so the <coughs> sugar's never dripping down on them. But the thing that we found with the candy boards is that candy will also help absorb the moisture. Yeah. Inside the hive. Yeah. But what moisture that doesn't absorb <coughs> then it goes up through the burlap and the, and the cedar shavings and collects in on the top of the inner lid and it can't rain back down through all of that stuff. Right. Huh. So. So yeah, I think it was I think it was a, a little effective, but I'd like to I'd like to get the cloth on the bottom and have the holes. I guess one other hybrid idea would be maybe to give a little bit of a shim up there, and you'd have. You see, if it was me, I think I'd take that feeder trough clear out. That's the right height. That's perfect height. Yeah. For your for your moisture. Pop box. the plastic out. Take take the yeah. whole thing out and then screen it on the bottom. I'm kind of thinking about that. You'll see a couple of these deployed where I put I, I've got sugar water on one side with the float and then sugar candy on this other side. And even with that float, I noticed this material is so slick. Right. They were just they were just clawing at it. So then I put a I put a screen in underneath the float. So I don't know. Overall I'm not entirely happy with these things. The things that I really liked about them were that you could come by in the evening and I could feed some sugar water to the ones that needed it and not have to worry about robbing bees all around and um, and not actually cracking into the hive, whereas those in-frame ones, you're, you're having to move the inner cover. I do try to keep those inner frame ones on the same side, so I know when I'm coming up to the hive, I can scoot the inner cover this way, and I'm going to be at my feeder. So, uh, But in general, yeah, I, I made some floats for those... Uh, in frame feeders this year that seem to be working pretty good. Um, I don't know, does anybody have any questions? So, so, so yeah, I guess the current situation though too is there's, there's some new queens that I introduced to some of these hives. Um, well, I guess I could just show you what the different ones are so you know what you're looking at. The, these two over here, we're a large, healthy colony that uh, that Suzanne and I actually split as part of my journeyman inspection this year. Uh, so that was a walkaway split where there there was some queen cups in there that didn't have eggs in there, but we moved a bunch of eggs over to the uh, to the hive on the right. So that hive on the right has a brand new queen. The hive on the left has a successful queen that made it through last year. Those ones. I use mostly medium stuff now because they do natural comb. Also, they're mostly carnies, so you'll see <coughs> these are smaller sizes, but... Now, most all the hives are natural comb? Yep. Okay. I mean, they're in their way of being worked out of natural comb, so when you're looking, you'll find you'll find <coughs> plastic, you'll find uh, wax foundation, and you'll so find... Keep that in mind <coughs> pulling frames, there could be some that are natural. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I wanted to... Um, so natural comb was one of my other ideas that I kind of wanted to play around with uh, and it's kind of a way to have some of the advantages of a top bar system without actually converting from your standard equipment you already have but but the disadvantage to that is that they're going to draw whatever they want to draw like this one's all it's like honeycomb or drone comb. But another thing is, at first I didn't know how to cinch these wires very well. So you'll see it's just got a big, it's a big kind of sag, you know? So not exactly happy with the way those ended up getting drawn. But I found these, um, that crimper tool. There's a little tool with uh, two, I brought it over, but it's got two wheels on it. And you run it along the wire. Also with a, with a, brood frame like this, I could actually stretch it enough to get this wire kind of taut, and then this gets it real taut. I found in the supers that the wires, it's not all that effective. The nice thing about the supers is that the frame actually does hold together a little better when you got that natural comb, because a lot of times they will support it at the bottom. So that's one thing to watch out for too. Some of the ones that don't have wires, you got to treat it kind of like a top bar thing where you want to keep it like this. 
If you go like this, or like this, depending on what the temperature is, you could break the comb off, especially if it's not attached very well on the sides. Um, um, so this is kind of like what we were talking about here, where they've actually drawn, these are some queen cups that they drew, but like this one, if you were to pull this frame up, you could end up scraping this, scraping this whole piece along, along there. So if you're, if you're kind of attacking it cautiously though, and you, you can pull these both at the same time and then separate them like this, or what I was saying too is if they're really, if there's two that are really intermingled and maybe they've drawn the honeycomb way over here, let's just not break those two apart. I mean, uh, earlier in the season, I would, I would try to break those apart, maybe shave them, get them to like recap them. But this time of the year, if there's a bunch of honey over here, because they will end up doing some ridiculously deep cells sometimes in these natural frames. They'll, they'll do like a honey cell that's like this deep sometimes. And, and so, they'll, so they'll draw off of one that they already have going, you know. They'll draw the one next to here way over into this one, you know, in one spot. But, um, let's see, yeah. I guess that's kind of natural comb, yeah. And so, it takes seven pounds of honey to make one pound of wax. So sometimes you, you don't get it. You don't get it all drawn out. It's a. Either that or you got some slack of bees. Yeah. So, um. Have enough food. Do they need to be fed extra? Do they need to be consolidated down to a smaller number of boxes? Or maybe even combined into one strong hive that has a better chance of getting through the winter? So we got to get in there and assess their situation. Now Rick wrote us some nice little notes here. He said two weeks ago, both of these colonies had great food patterns. The new queen and the old queen both were healthy. And so he didn't want to do anything to combine them yet. However, he said he noticed a lot of deformed of wings graffiti. on some of the bees, which you know can be a sign of throw mites. So he treated some of his graffiti there. Acid yes, that's what I'm interested in. So he wants to look at the lower frames and make sure he's not that's damaging cool. with the wax too much. So that's going to be a really interesting thing to see. Have any of you treated with oxalic yet? Not yet. I have all this stuff to do it, but I haven't done it yet because I want to see right. someone else do it. No. Right, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. Okay. So I just got done building my vaporizer yesterday. Yeah. I was just going to so say that's right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right yeah. Honeybee and box on the bottom. Okay, right. That's I just got to hook it up to a battery and see if it heats up now. Whew. Okay. Get so, one, one thing I did yesterday, <coughs> and this is something that we've been talking about in the club for a little while, though we're not, we're not always so scrupulous about it, is that when we're going from our own apiary to somebody else's apiary, it's a good idea to clean the hive tools because you just never know what kind of pathogens you might be bringing into somebody else's hive. So the, the, this little tool soaked in boiling water, I took a metal, a, a metal brush and scrubbed off all the propolis, which was quite a long contract, as you can imagine. And it's probably a good thing to do even when you're going from one hive to another in your own apiary. So, so do you think the bleach water would do the same? Yeah, I think bleach is a real good approach. Yeah. I've stepped mine through the dishwasher before. Oh, okay. yeah. It would just come clean and... Nope. Propolis <laughs> is like the gift that keeps on giving yes. in life. Now, I, I, didn't bring, I, life. I didn't bring a smoker along. Oh. I, I know that I should I probably use a smoker come, more than I do. But let's yeah. see. Yeah, alcohol probably help this. break it down. Oh, wow. We're going to put this upside that. down over here so that if we have to do any box moving, we can put it right into there. This seems to be a lot of uh, little crawly things. Can we take a look yeah. and see what our mite drop is right off the bat there? I think we probably should do that. Yeah. So he didn't say what time yesterday he put them in, but let's just look at this. Right away I can see yeah. mites. Mm -hmm. So the oxalic, oh you can see the oxalic crystals here too, that's cool. Look at that. Hey, Cody, do you want to yep. get like a close-up on this thing? Uh, get on the side. Yeah, I'm a photographer here. <laughs> you get a big glare. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So I've never seen the oxalic crystals before up close like this. That's, that's what they look like when they land down so on the bottom. Would toxic to human touch? Well, probably. 
That's after oxalic question. after oxalic acid has been burned, it's a neutral substance. Really? Yeah, yeah it's a neutral substance because uh, it, it's already been vaporized. Because I know you can use it. I think you dilute it in water and bleach wood with it. Yeah, it's yeah. Wood. I think it's, it's when it's in bleach. vapor form that it's toxic to us. Yeah, that's because we and so that's, it in. Yeah, so that's why yeah. you have to have the vapor. Yeah. Dewey the Karen was saying at our at our let's see at our August meeting that when you do this stuff, you want to have a really good va uh, respirator. Rare, yeah. Because it can really mess up. Your yeah, lung and you tissue. have to have the organic but filters. The, the organic rhubarb filter. has a lot of oxalic acid in it. Oh, does it? Leaves. I think that's yeah. where they get there this. There are dozens of mites on this thing. Yeah. Suzanne, yeah, have you guys ever had a guy named Danny come from... Um, you know, I just I have a message into Danny. We're going to try to... Danny Najera. We're going to try to get him to be down. He's had him twice. He's about the most entertaining speaker I've ever I've heard that about him. Yeah. And his, his, I've uh, heard that about him. So, do you think of Rick Stoller in New York? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Just yeah, come on over. <laughs> he didn't he did make that any too easy for you. Let's put, let's put it back in so that Rick can see it. Hello, girls. Where do you want this? Uh, Suzanne, right here? Yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to move to the front of the hive. Usually I don't stand in front of the hive. Get out of your, out of your way. Where you're trying to shoot. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little height challenged. So this is going to be interesting. Well, okay. This side here is closer. Okay. There's a stool over there to the your right. If That'll help you any. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention her uh, well, the vertically challenged. Yeah, I think I might want to stay off. <laughs> now, if Gottfried Fritz were here, he would be saying, use the smoke, Luke. And He's got a really good point with that, but I have a personal thing about not really liking the smoke of bees very much. I like to try the sugar water approach instead. Oh, well, I use sugar water all the time. Yeah. I, I use water. both, depending on how, how deep I'm going. If I'm going way in. Oh, yeah, the pollen patty on there, doesn't he? Do we want to? They're really enjoying it. They do enjoy it. Now, Suzanne, I noticed that, that your sugar water is on a heavy stream. Yeah, I use mine on, on like a, a mist. I, know. I mean, I usually do that too, but the the thing is sort of reaching the end of its useful life. I'm going to have to replace okay, it. Okay, I was just wondering, <laughs> you know, if there was that some trick to awesome. it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine mine gets uh, finally bad by a new one. Yes, they just uh, <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> mist anymore. Uh, perhaps we should look at uh, the ones coming. I like the large out. pump ones. Yep. Yeah. They seem yeah. pretty mellow. Buy the cheap dollar store ones, you can throw them away. Yeah, you see, this is what Rick was talking about with the little communication holes that they leave there. They do like them on the bottom, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. And that's probably a good thing because it makes it easier for them to go from frame to frame in the winter so that they can take advantage of food And see the supplies. communication so holes like on the sides? What now? See the communication hole by your left yeah. thumb? Yeah, I do. Mine are mostly nice like that on the ones. sides. I use nice little plastic foundation. I cut all four corners off of my hmm. foundation and I take pretty good chunk out of them so that there's you want this always have them. Up. Yeah, we better peel that up. Sorry, girls. We're not taking your food away. We're just... Oh, that's the pollen, right? That's the pollen patty, yeah. Are you taking all of these out? These uh, frames? We'll, we'll get to them. One so just set it over on the inner cover yeah. for right Yeah, that's now. a good idea. Let's just stick it on the inner cover. Same with that cherry block and then... Sorry, girls. Your hamburgers will come back. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's see if I spread this out a little more. Here, little okay, we're going to go over to <laughs> high setup number two. Okay. Let's just take it off. And we'll close these girls up, and then we can go mosey over and take them off at another. Basically, my assessment of these colonies is that they're both doing pretty well for the winter. I would just want to make sure to keep feeding them. The food, yeah. At this point, yeah. while they can take advantage. There's just one down. down. Oh, just 
I'm not that up close and then I'll have to go to the go. So yeah, through, Sorry, guys. through the next month, if he just keeps on feeding them, they'll stow away the food supplies and hopefully these colonies will do well through the winter. He, he's tr he's, he's going to treat again with the oxalic acid and keep knocking down the mites. Yeah. The thing with that is that the mites will hatch out with all the baby bees that are hatching out. If there's mites in there, they'll hatch out. So like about every seven days, if you treat with the oxalic, you do it three times, then you've gotten through the brood cycle and hopefully you're knocking down most of the mites. Otherwise, you have to wait until December when it's right. broodless, right? Right. And you can do it again then, too. Yeah, and, and probably... A lot of us will end up doing that. Oxalic acid just became legal for use as a virology right. treatment about a year ago. And a lot of people are saying it's making a big, big difference in beating back the virology mites. Yeah. Have you guys been able to find it here? I had to order mine online. I wasn't able to find any. The vaporizer or the, no, or the actual the, acid? the actual Home, acid. Home Depot? I tried it's Home Depot and Ace Hardware. Somebody tried, told me to try really? Ace Hardware. No. What did you ask for? They don't even carry it anymore. Uh, wood bleach? Yeah. yeah. They, 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 didn't, they didn't have I even went online and I couldn't see it there. I had to order it online. Yeah. I, think I got mine from Amazon. Yeah, yeah me too. But, um, wow. Because I, 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 I bought wood bleach for uh, did you see the, uh, the bleaching some, uh, I did, I, this is some teak wood last yeah. year. Yeah. I bought it at Home this Depot in Lacey. And you got okay. it? Yeah. See, and I checked here. Maybe yeah. I, I mean, yeah. maybe they have it in Lacey. I don't know. But yeah. I checked here and couldn't find it. Yeah. What type? Like at what point? Well, at Home Depot here, I asked them. They go, huh? Yeah. That's what I got, too. I was like, okay, I'm getting nowhere quickly. You don't know what the wood is. Yeah. I got nowhere quickly. It's going to vary some from year to year. If we had a, like an Indian summer, if we had mm -hmm. a warmish October, I would keep feeding the yeah, Anyway, I got a, but a pretty good sized bag and for sure I just change yeah. in the finished fall. up building my only, wet fall only the, vaporizer the yesterday. Stuff. So, excuse me. That's when we give yeah. the hard stuff. I was kind of wondering, like, how long it lasts. I'm wondering, <laughs> because I, what I ordered online was a huge bag. Oh, it'll last you for forever, <laughs> it seems like. Uh -huh. I just, so, I just uh, keep it in something airtight. Yeah. So it doesn't oxidize. Yeah. Just a minute here. So if anybody needs anyone, any, they can. <laughs> At this point in the season, is there any kind of uh, extra pest issues as far as yellow jackets? Like, yellow jackets. Yellow it's jackets. two things. Yellow jackets are going to be attracted because they're running out of natural food. They're going to start looking for both brood and honey out of the hives. They'll eat pretty much anything they can get. They're opportunists. The other thing is the varroa mites, because as we get into this time of the year, the, yeah, is, the, the bees are going to, they're going to start reproducing less, so as the bee population goes down, that means the mites that are hatching and continuing to hatch, their population is going to go up, because they don't shut down for the winter. So you got to watch out, because that's when the mites can really crash a colony. That's why Rick's been testing to see if they've got mites and treating for it, to knock them down now so that they can't just wipe them out in the winter time. So those are, I, I think, the two really big things. So what, um, as far as the yellow jackets dealing with that, I mean, what, what can you do to... You know, honestly, I think the off? best thing to do with the yellow jackets is in the early spring. Put traps up in the early spring, because what happens with the yellow jackets is it's the queens that overwinter and they hatch out first. Mm -hmm. And so the queens have to feed themselves for a while. And if you can catch them, basically it's like kill them before they multiply, literally. I start February 1st, and I put yep. out yep. two-liter bottles with yep. three bees. Bacon, beer, and brewer's yeast. <laughs> no way. Yeah. yeah. Put it all inside there, shake it up, and uh, uh, the brewer's yeast will, will activate with the beer, and the, the bacon will rot, and it'll stink real bad. And they love that. And the that. queens are attracted to that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's old nasty, fish parts work really, really well, yeah. too. Yeah. Little, little bits of like raw hamburger meat and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I knew one beekeeper who <laughs> put really raw good. hamburger yeah. meat on top oh, yeah. of soapy water, <laughs> and then they'd come in zeroing out on the hamburger meat, and they'd drown in the soapy water. Yep. Yeah, it's so, a trap. It breaks the the, yeah. the water tension on the yeah. water. Just yeah. add a couple drops. And it's nice yeah. With yeah. using meat because then the bee these guys aren't attracted to exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. If you oh. don't use something like that, they will get oh, in those traps. Yeah. 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 Not not a huge number of them, but. Really are. Oh, it's, hey Jordan, if you want to come around the front, there's some nice pictures to be had of the pollen baskets. 
So we got people. We got some good colors up here. Yeah. See the one right there. Yep. Orange. Neon. Yellow. Neon yellow. Orange. Yep. <laughs> yellow, yellow. I'm not sure what it is that's yielding the orange, but they're digging it. They're bringing it back. Bet you it's yellow, squash. So. Could be. Very well could be. So these are two real nice, healthy colonies. You know, he's. There is that deformed wing thing that we saw in the one, but he's addressing it, doing what he can mm -hmm. to help him survive. This time next year, it'll have a completely different complexion. Yep. It'll be full of stuff, not just a little here and there. Yep. yep. Now, you see him beard on the front a little bit. That's because we just inspected. They're all a little bit upset. They're figuring out getting back in. So, but in about 10 minutes, they'll be pretty much back to normal. Yeah, it's getting was, warmer. With my bees, There's that too, yeah. In the top, top bar highs. If you are gentle with what you're doing, mm -hmm. they're, they don't get real upset. They really don't. I mean, I don't think anybody got stung while we were doing this. And I'm, I'm wearing really white pants that would be very easy for them to sting through. Rick so did. Far they didn't. I've Rick got. got <laughs> I've got four hives, and only one of them do I really have to worry about. Mm -hmm. But that one hive, just approaching it, they're out here challenging you right away. It's like, whoa! You know, it's funny how <laughs> they clean that though and change you, that. Yes, you could. Yeah. And that's, I'm, I'm thinking about recleaning my garden rolls that I'm getting, about to be christened the moon rolls, because every time I even go near them, they sting you know, Last week I was putting the first bunch of buckets of sugar water on all my bees. And I'm going into the garden, but all of them are just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and they're already starting to, to eat on it while I'm putting it down. The garden girls, I'm putting the sugar on, and they're coming after me. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> they don't appreciate that. No. I got so stung 20 like, times last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and probably 20 you go near them, and they'll chase oh, yeah. you 100, yeah. 100 yeah. yards yeah. out. It's yeah. like, yeah. I've had way yeah. better old house. Most of the time, if you if they're getting real pissy and start frapping your your uh, face mask, so just walk away 10, 15 feet or so, and they'll stop and go back. Up. Oh, this one hive. Yeah. yeah. I had one. I found that mean bees make they were chasing. Mean bees make more honey. But my other. Well, I'm sort of yeah, I don't want to do anything though, right? with it because I'm not sure. Right. Until I do a rollamite count on them, I want to know what the mean bees do with the rollamite. Another thing I've been doing is actually... You know, just to see if they're more aggressive towards everything, you know? 